Hey, good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, January 27th, and I'm here with George and Megan. Uh, we're your Valiant Live crew. If you've never watched us before, uh, we're team members from Valiant Technology, a managed service provider located in New York City, actually uh, the heart of New York City, just about, what are we, a block or two away from Madison Square Garden and Krispy Kreme? Yep. Yep. So all the important I was, destinations. I would say Penn Station, but sure. My, you know, yeah, my, my mind is more train infrastructure, but sure, Matt. I'll go, I'll go <laughs> Matt. <laughs> um, and we provide um, IT uh, system management and consulting services for small to medium businesses, especially ones within marketing, communications, uh, nonprofits, and professional services. And uh, it's something that we really love doing. And I think that uh, some of that comes through in our streams. And today's going to be a little bit different from uh, from what we normally do. Yeah. You know, uh, last week we did some definitions around cybersecurity, uh, particularly acronyms, because they can be a very frustrating thing to deal with, especially when you're trying to solve problems and people are throwing all these things out at you and they just they, they don't make sense. In fact, uh, I think at one point I was talking with some folks last week and I referred to them as agronyms because I, you know, you get a little aggressive when you start hearing too many of them being thrown around and not really being able to make process because of how heavily they can be used. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I think, George, I think this was your idea to do the same thing again this week, but for cybersecurity related terms. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, I, I'm going to give you, Matt, all the credit for the course for puzzle. I was thinking more of like a bingo or hang or a hangman kind of. Like I honestly sword. wanted to just I wanted to get a reason for you to scream Yahtzee, but I just couldn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So but uh, but Matt, Matt, and I, Matt and I are brainstorming the other day and we were kind of like, oh, you know, Matt's like, hey, I got this idea. Let me show it to you. What do you think? And he threw up a, a, a course for puzzle. I was like, that's clever. Um, and so. Uh, I was really impressed. So it, it's, it's really fun. And, and actually, it's a really useful way of looking at the word. So it was a, it, it is is a great I think, way. I think that when you get to interact with something, you retain much more information. Yeah. And I really didn't want us to do the whole kind of like PowerPoint thing twice in a row. It works. But, you know, right. let's do something a little bit different. Let's innovate. Right. Exactly. So um, how, what, what better way to innovate than to do a crossword puzzle? <laughs> Cutting right. edge. On. Cutting edge. So, um, so today we are going to go over a crossword puzzle that I put together. It's slightly evil. In fact, our uh, CIO Justin kind of had a bit of a belly laugh with me yesterday when he saw it, because there are a couple of things in there that have spaces, and spaces in a crossword puzzle is just kind of like this is wrong. It's but it's for you guys, wrong. and I want to challenge you guys a little well, the bit. Well, thing you were telling us ahead yeah. of time that there are spaces. Get exactly. a little hint there. Um, so uh, before we get started with that, just one quick um, cybersecurity related uh, note, or I don't know what to call it, but you know, I was on the uh, 2600 Magazine Facebook group, I think it was last night, and I saw this post, and it stopped me in my tracks. You know, a lot of the times, um, whether it's us or another company, uh, talking about cybersecurity awareness, particularly with email and phishing attempts, there are certain things that we tell people to look for. Look for where the email is coming from look for typos or anything that just doesn't feel right to you. And I think that's been a great uh, basic guideline for many years, but it's changing. There was a gentleman, and give me one second, I wanna make sure I say his name and credit him because it was a fantastic find. Um, I'm just gonna keep talking as I look for it. Oh, here we go, his name is Adam. And he posted a screenshot of an email he received that looks like it came from Amazon. And I'm gonna bring it up screen real quick. Now. If you read this, thank you for choosing us. Your recent order with us has been confirmed and will be delivered soon. Find more details about your order attached down below. In case if you're viewing this as plain text, try changing your mailbox settings. Happy shopping. And the the, the, the stuff below actually looks pretty close to a normal Amazon yeah. email. It's very yeah. legit. The logo looks good. The, the, uh, the branding image, is right. The layout or... is good. The, the way it's written is good. You know, a lot of the times, one of the warning signs when you're looking at an email that is most likely a, a piece of, uh, as a phishing attempt, it isn't exactly written very well. There are usually grammatical errors. You can look at it and kind of tell that the person that wrote it was not necessarily a, a, na a native, native English, English speaker yep. or writer. Um, but in this one, you don't really get that. There are some kind of like little areas that feel a little strange, you know, the idea of suggesting someone change their mailbox settings is a bit of a red flag, but it's not as apparent when you look at this email at the whole. 
Now it turns out from, from Adam's uh, uh, post that the entire thing's an image. So realistically, it's designed to be clicked to get you to some kind of page to ultimately give up credentials for Amazon or something else. But I guess what I'm saying is as much as technology advances and we have newer and better systems for filtering out threats and AI and machine learning and all these other terms get thrown around, the human brain's cap capable of adapting too, and we're seeing that here. And um, I think it's gonna become much more obvious over time if, I, if we're seeing things like this right now being posted online. And it's going to require us to be a little bit more, I can never get the word out, Vig vigilant, vigilant, vigilant. 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 I can't, it's that word, it trips me up every single time. But yeah. we're gonna have to be, a, be paying attention to additional details when looking at these types of emails to determine if there's a threat or not. Yeah. Also, like I think a lot of it too is like, and one thing I noticed a lot just speaking with people is, um, if you're not expecting something, you probably shouldn't do anything about it. The one that really struck me, I was speaking with a client and they were talking about push notifications and they said, I always just click it. And I was like, I almost like fell out of my chair. I was like, why would you click something you didn't invoke? Just leave the key in the lock for your front door at that point. <laughs> so I, had, I was like, oh, you better like, you know, just talk to them about this. And this is like one of those things that happens probably more often than we want to admit. Um, oh, people that click stuff like, oh, that's notification. I click yes. And I, why? I, it's, it's on the rise. I got, this is another one of those. I, I got a, a voicemail at 1.30 Saturday morning that was supposedly T-Mobile calling me about an overdue bill. Um, <laughs> me forgetting my T-Mobile payment, it happens every now and then. But for someone to call at 1.30 in the morning and the voicemail to begin with, for some reason, sir, I was routed to your voicemail instead of you. It, it, the whole thing just screamed uh, not genuine. Um, yeah. But uh, it's, you know, it's the, the things there, the, the folks trying to get information are bumping up a little bit, you know, they're stepping up their game. And it's it's going to be critical that not only that we do the same and hopefully exceed uh, what they're trying to achieve, you know, as far as sophistication, but really make sure that others are aware of, of these changes that are happening. So I just really quickly wanted to show that before we get into the crossword puzzle. Yeah. And uh, now this torturous crossword puzzle, the the evil, the spell, the, the spaces, all the stuff. Let's get into it, guys. I'm challenging you. Let's go through this. All right. So let me get it up on screen. Does this make you and like a word? Does this make you like a word master, Matt? How, uh, what's, your, what's your title while you're doing this? Ooh, I'm the wordy boy. Wordy boy. All right. Wordy. <laughs> um, so we have the we have the crossword puzzle here. It's I built it in Illustrator, so we're literally just looking at what's on my computer right now. And I have the clues. So I thought maybe I would go from across, down, across, down, and see how many we can get through in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. And then by next week, we'll have a free version of this that's a little bit less evil. Little, it'll remove the spaces and some of the other tricks, the pitfalls that I put in here, and make it freely available to anyone that wants it. Check it out. Yeah. So well. let's get started. All right. We're going to start with two across. I feel like Ken Jennings right now. It's very efficient. <laughs> um, a device or application with the capabilities of an intrusion detection system and the ability to stop possible incidents from taking place. That's two across, which is right here. Megan, right. you want to take it or should I take that one? You take this one. I already read ahead and I think I know this. Ah, <laughs> I didn't read it. So it's, it's an intrusion prevention system. Tell him what he's won. IPS. Boom. Yes, intrusion there is an IPS. Prevention system. All right. And yes, of course, an intrusion prevention system is a device or a software application. It can be packaged in a number of different ways that doesn't just detect abnormal activity on a network, but has the ability to take actions to stop whatever's happening from being right. completely executed. Correct. It can clamp down on network ports. It can shut down access. There's a bunch of different ways that it actually functions, but it's a very, it's, it can be a little tricky because you get if, if it's not tuned properly, you can get some really bad false positives, which can impact the uh, production. So be a little careful with your IPS, uh, but it's a really useful tool to have in your arsenal. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. See, this is good. I like the way this is going so far. We're, we're getting we're points. Um, we're going to do one down next. And that is an authentication method that requires two or more verification factors to gain access to a resource. That would be... Oh, this oh. long, torturous word right here. I'm raising my hand. I'm um, 
Yes, because we bring this up in every every sales meeting. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the first things to do. Uh, multifact. What is multifactor authentication? Ooh, I don't actually accept answers in the form of a question, but <laughs> say, so we're going to let it slide. <laughs> multifactor authentication, and of course, there are a number of different terms that do mean the same thing or uh -huh. similar, such as two-factor authentication or two FA. But again. It has the number two in it, which limits it to two things, Correct. a password and a token, a password and a piece of biometric data. And there's nothing wrong with that. But um, as time goes on and things become more complex, there are going to be new systems that come out. And the term multi-factor just That's makes right. so much more sense to you. So multi-factor authentication or the acronym MFA. MFA. You'll see MFA on everything nowadays, any oh, yeah. kind of security attestation, any kind of insurance. Even your financial institutional ask for MFA. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important to use it uh, every place you can at all times. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions about it, it can be a little confusing. Let us know. We can we'll do our best to answer them. Yeah, it's baseline now at this point. Yeah, it's table stakes. Best yep. way to it. All right. Back to across. We're going to do three across this time. And this is a hardware device on a network that allows wireless capable devices to connect to that network. Here, three across. George, do you want to take it? Wireless access point. Oh, I'm so sorry. That wasn't it. Megan, do you have an answer? For three across? Yes. Oh, I that's not it. it. I'm gaming the system for you, Megan. It is wireless access point. Oh, you got it. Look at that. <laughs> gaming the system? Just, just I don't want the boys to win. There are no points <laughs> oh. in this game, but I don't want him to win. Oh, OK. Sure. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> I see you do the spaces. You, 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 all right, all right. <laughs> I'm accepted. I, I feel like I'm the host and running man. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to like bust through my front door in a minute, really upset with me. Richard Dawson. Um, but wireless access point, that's a term that's been around since technically the late 1990s, although they didn't really hit the mainstream until the very early 2000s. And right. um, I've had people call them all different kinds of things. And I think that, you know, it's, it's a term that is one that a lot of us know. And I, I sometimes I don't think that, we necessarily use the abbreviation for this too often. WAP, W-A-P. Well, um, the song made it more complex last year. Yes, <laughs> yes, that does add a, a layer of explanation to it. You're, that's absolutely right. Yep. Um, but they're important to know about. They're important to understand when, when, where they are in an office, how they're positioned, how they've been secured. Can someone from the outside gain access to your network because right. your wireless access point is completely open? It happens a lot. There's plenty of networks even in um, within the vicinity of our building in the city where if you Look at your cell phone, say, on a floor or two. There are tons and tons of access points that are completely unsecured. And yeah. each one of those is a gateway into someone's network. Correct. Correct. And yeah, yes. The uh, And also, an, as a small aside, is that a wireless access point uh, gets confused by a lot of people. And they'll say, hey, the, the internet's out. But they're not talking about the internet. They're talking about Wi-Fi. Or, or why, why, vice versa, you get someone says, the Wi-Fi's out, but they're talking about the internet. So they're two different things, but it's all kind of a jumble together in a lot of people's minds. Yeah, and to the user, it's the same. a device. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, a wireless access point is just converting the medium from being a piece of yeah. copper to the air around you. <laughs> they, Drew, that's a really good point. Is for a, or a honeypot. You're exactly right. Uh, use, yeah, use wireless. Absolutely. Use use open wireless wireless access uh, uh, networks, SSIDs, uh, uh, networks to uh, draw in folks. So it's like, it's a kind of bring them in and a honeypot to place that they say like, oh, come look at this thing. It's like a way to trap folks. So good point. Thank you. I'm just it. imagining um, Winnie the Pooh with his hands stuck like in the tree trunk trying to get yeah. to the honey. And he's like unwilling to let go of it. So we can't get out of the tree. He's stuck. Yep. They're going to, you know, things are going to happen. Exactly. Um, all right. Moving on to number four down, the secure version of the hypertext transfer protocol. Four down, boom, right here. HTTPS. Oh, there we go. HTTPS. <laughs> it made me doubt myself, Matt, because I didn't look at these beforehand. So now I'm kind of like in the back of my head. I'm like, is that right? He's really shaking your Matt. <laughs> I'm having fun with this today. George I love is it. Our, is our expert. Come on. <laughs> and, you know, of course, HTTPS is something that has become another standard, very much like multi-factor authentication. It's simply something 
that you put in place because it does offer a significant level of protection. It helps yeah. to secure communications between your computer's web browser and the mm -hmm. server it's communicating with. And of course, that's incredibly important with all the types of transactions that go on these days, whether it's buying a pair of shoes on Amazon or making a mortgage payment or, or anything. You want to make sure that the information is not going to be something that someone can intercept and uh, interpret in the right. middle of that that con in the middle of right. that two way conversation that's going on. Correct. You want to encrypt it. You want to make sure that it gets in the right it gets there to the right place where it belongs. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So it's really important. It's also you might see it called SSL. That's SSL being the the technology that's used to achieve it. that secure connection and. Correct. You know, websites need SSL certificates installed in order to handle these types of encryption be between, you know, as, as communications take place. And that is when you see the little lock in the browser window. Yeah. The lock in the, the browser. That's how you know Which it's good. Important. Exactly. Um, there are, you know, vulnerabilities with SSL that, that do happen. In fact, there was, I think, something for Let's Encrypt just recently about them having to invalidate a bunch of their certificates. So right. it is not a perfect technology, but it's definitely one that, I don't know about you guys, I'm glad to see has become so widespread. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, now a uh, break and a word from our sponsors. Visit us at Valiant Tech, uh, thevaliantway.com. That was it. That was the whole sponsored <laughs> message. Um, <laughs> now we're on to number five across. A device or application that monitors a network for malicious activity or policy violations. And I'll give you a hint. It's related to the first word that you solved earlier. Is it a intrusion detection system? There we go. Intrusion yeah. detection system. So now, of course, I think in, in most situations, you're going to hear IDS, IPS as one, because uh, as one unit, they, they're a much more effective device because you're in integrating the ability to proactively handle a situation before it fully occurs right but intrusion detection systems are are incredibly useful to have even with that without the prevention component right it, once it goes back to you sometimes you don't want an automated system to be able to shut a system down you want to send over an alert so that it can be investigated depending on the the um, use case that's what it comes case, down to the yeah. complexity of the system there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't necessarily want to have a automation usually one automation but not always so i mean look you can use an intrusion detection system for me for reasons other than detecting breaches and malicious activity it could be used simply to to monitor who's accessing a portion of the network and not even for the, the sake of restricting but for understanding usage i mean there's a lot of things you can use one of these for right. even if it's not really what it was purpose built for you know um but again they're they're fantastic but typically you you, you talk about intrusion prevention as opposed to just detection. Yes. Um, I kind of look at, <laughs> this is going to sound wrong, but I think it's laughable a little bit. It's sort of like, you ever seen the movies where there's like a bank robbery and you have the security guard who's asleep at the front door and then all of a sudden he's like, hey, someone just got robbed. I mean, that's kind of more of an intrusion detection system. It doesn't actually do anything with it. It's just the one that goes, hey, something's wrong here. There's some degree. It's part of like it's part Still of like a useful. logging system, and there's a lot to it. But yeah, and, and, hey, you know what? There are clues related to logging systems. So if we can get to those, we can make the connection. Oh, so let's okay. continue on. We're on to down seven: centralized monitoring, analysis, detection. Oh, Matt, you're muted. I, I accidentally muted myself. I think Matt, you muted yourself. I was like, hey. And now my audio is gone. Hold on one second. <laughs> I thought he was toying with us again. Hey, yeah, me too. I thought I was like, hey, can you guys hear me? You just fine, Matt. <laughs> I can't hear you. I'm reloading the screen. I'll be right back. Great. It's what do you think real. that clue was? Oh, it went away. It's it's what? keep it real. Hey Ryan, what's up? <laughs> oh, there he is. He's coming. Oh, hey. Hey, I am back. Give me one second. My audio failed. That happened uh, a couple times this week. I'm going to have to figure it out. I'm going to have to open a trouble ticket and get that looked at. Um, okay, so number seven down. Would you like me to repeat the uh, the clues? Mm, sure. I'll, I'll also give you another hint afterwards. But uh, centralized monitoring, analysis, detection, prevention, and response to cybersecurity incidents. 
you may think of this term as being a building or a 24 seven available service around security. A sock. Ooh, ooh you got it. Boom. Sock. What is, so it's not something you put in your feet. It is nope. a security operations center. Exactly. Security operations center versus, <laughs> versus the same acronym within the context of compliance, which is, um, help me out here. I always forget what it stands Sox. for. Sar Sarbanes Oxley. No, no, what the, the certification like SOC 1, SOC 2. Oh, yeah, it says um, something controls. See, that's the thing. We do this daily, and it, it, the, the, the number of acronyms, or even one acronym having like eight different meanings depending yeah. on context, uh, uh, can become yeah, a real problem. Yeah, it's a SOC. To, yeah, it's a security, uh, security it's organization, controls. organization controls. or There you go. It's, it's yeah. along those lines. Um, so it's actually, it, they're, they're related enough. Oh, no, now, you. Cut yeah, out again, Matt. again Matt. <laughs> this audio. Yeah. So um, the sock bit was brought to you by uh, living in a New York apartment and everything is next to each other. So. Yes, there's not a lot of space. I uh, visited some friends in Pennsylvania and uh, there's so much space in Pennsylvania. It's a much out. larger. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> Okay, I am back yet again. Our sponsors are giving me a really tough time with audio and video today. It's all right. Um, George and I were riffing about yes. it's all right. apartments and sizes. Apartments. <laughs> I, I push this Mac to its limits, and I think it's not it's not having the best day today. Um, but yeah, so a security operations center. And of course, that, that's something that we offer with the cybersecurity office, uh, offers that we have for our, our customers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's incredibly advanced. Uh, of course, we work with Barracuda MSP. For uh, for these services, and uh, I got the uh, chance to do a virtual tour of their of their sock a few months ago. It was incredibly impressive. I mean, very cool. It's like it's like NASA level um, sophistication in some areas. <laughs> and here is uh, a comment from our COO. And I bet Pat Sajak wouldn't have uh, audio trouble. I'm going to have to call the folks at ABC and see what they can do for us. <laughs> Help us um, out here. Some <laughs> some better production. <laughs> It'll all be fine. All right, let's uh, let's move on to six across. This is this is actually a really good one. Um, organization promoting U.S. innovation and industrial competitiveness by advancing measurement science, standards, and technology. Now, I think the ones that you're going to concentrate on there are going to be standards and technology. Will you show us again? Because I think I know what it is. I just want to be sure. Number six across. So that is right here. Um, what is NIST? Ooh. That is it. Number National six. Institute of Standards and Technology, right? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. We're, we're, we're getting through these. I'm, I'm, this yeah. is great. I'm having a great time with this. Yeah. And, this is good. Uh, I think George and I should do this before every every, every uh, meeting. <laughs> before a meeting. I know. We should get to refresh yeah. ourselves. But the beauty of this is that we're not just kind of like going through acronyms and explaining what they are. We're, we're having a little fun with it. This is going to be something like, you know, we even had that moment right now, uh, just a moment ago at the SOC and the differences uh, depending on how, what you're talking about. And, and that's gonna stick with us as well. This is a learning experience. I love doing things that are a little more hands-on like this. We're gonna walk away, anyone that sees this is gonna walk away learning something new. And I'm gonna stop talking so we can get down to nine, yeah. down. nine down. Forensic evidence of potential intrusions on a system or network. Nine down. So that is, where's number nine? Right here. It's an acronym with three letters. IOC. There we go. IOC. Indication of, indication of compromise. Indication of compromise. And an indication of compromise can be, you know. Uh, is that like IDS? Or is it? Well, well, no, it's actually a sign. Think of like a crime scene and maybe yeah. a bullet casing on the ground. That's an indication that something went wrong. And with indication of compromise, you may realize that um, certain accounts on a network have elevated privileges where they shouldn't. Right or an administrative password has changed, or there are file shares that normally don't exist that are open. Right. That means someone's right. finding they're, they're, a way to gain right. data. They oh, may be like, fought, right. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Megan. Sorry. Like they say, if you have an app that's just on your phone that you didn't download, you know, like-, like, well, that's, like a, that's a really, that's, that's, like a, that's like the red flag, that's a huge one, but yeah, it's like files that don't belong in a certain place, right. or certain hashes. Perfect analogy um, from Drew, yeah. a runny nose is an indication of a cold. It's that's a right. sign that something has happened. Something's wrong. Um, you know, the classic 
not clear to the end end user or person is that my computer's running slow today, and slowness could indicate that something's happening, a process is running, yeah. that sort of thing. Uh, years ago, I had a machine that had, I think, a root kit or something run on it. This is like 10, 15 years ago, and it was acting up weird. So I went into the Microsoft console and looked at the log. You know, there's a system log, the application log. There's all these logs you can pull information from, and they were all empty. That was <laughs> someone right. racing their tracks in a very obvious yeah. way. That was an that's, 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 a, that's a messy way of doing it, but yeah, exactly. That's like yeah. this nuclear option. So IOC, I'm happy that we got to that one because I think it's a very important to term mm -hmm. to... Uh, explain to people, not just within the realm of cybersecurity and compliance and everything, but insurance. If there is a breach, if there's forensic investigation that takes place, IOC is going to be a term that you hear. And I think it's a really good one to understand oh, yeah. what it means in conversation. Yeah, um, absolutely. All right. Let's keep continue with number eight across. A local connection, a local, co sorry, a collection of local area networks that communicate with each other, the internet is the world's largest of these. Oh, I know, I know, because of Eight across. Yeah. A, a wide access net, a wide area network, right? Got it. Yeah. Good job. Boom. Yeah. Wide area network. I I read that in CompTIA and I told, I asked my boyfriend, I was like, uh, do you know what the largest one is? And he was, he didn't, he didn't frame it that way. And I was like, the internet. <laughs> I got really excited. <laughs> my blown. That's right. Well, it so, is. And uh, sorry, George, go ahead. I was going to say, if you ever see it drawn on any kind of indication, it's usually drawn as a cloud. Mm -hmm. And that's where the term cloud comes from, was like the, was the WAN sort of like the idea of like the stuff out there that's beyond your control. Nebulous. Yeah. It's nebulous. nebulous. Right. So it's not really no necessarily idea. your concern. You just have to know it's there. And I mean, even if, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because, you know, the hands-on days are kind of starting to really kind of get some distance from what I do these days. But even most firewalls, the port that your internet connection goes in is your WAN port. And it'll typically be labeled. Has that, that changed? Yeah. But that, no, it's still a WAN port, usually speaking, depending on the firewall, the router, um, and how you set it up. And, you know, there's the WAN side and the LAN side. That's another term you might, I don't know if you're a LAN, uh, but local area network. It, it is, may or may not be on the cross not. puzzle. I don't know. Let's see. Let's um, see. All right, so now we're moving on to 10 down. A system designed to distinguish human from machine input to prevent spam or the automated collection of information. That would be 10 down right here. And I will tell you guys, it is an acronym. It's not a term. And it's a very difficult one to pronounce sometimes. Uh, wow. I don't know, Matt. I think my stuff, man, this one. Fishing? Nope. Nope. Would you like, here, I'll read this one more time. And if it doesn't come, I'll, uh, I'll answer it. A system designed to distinguish human from machine input to prevent spam or the automated collection of information. Think Turing. Computer vision? AI. Nope. Artificial nope. intelligence. Is, is Drew right? Drew's got it. Catch up. Oh, okay. Thank you, Drew. Good job, Drew. Thank you. So we're going to go here. here. So I always, I always I, you know, it's a tough word. To, it's a tough acronym to pronounce. Uh, uh, I have friends. I'm, I'm just going to blow it up right now. My buddy Cam, he's called it Capacha for many years. <laughs> and like, we'll be in, like, we were, we would, we used to work together and he'd say, and I just get completely confused. Like I had no clue what he was talking about. Um, yeah. Right. Is this, is that, is that the, the tea that you drink? Is that fermented I, thing? Weird. Like, yeah, it's, 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 one of those, it's one of those acronyms that um, represents something that we all interact with on a daily basis and is important, but it would be really nice to have a term that's a little bit easier to, uh, to throw around out yeah. there. Um, so yes, yeah, I, I have a question. It is, it all, it's almost 11. Are we going to, wow. either way, I'm happy to stay. Yeah, you know what or... we're going to do? This is great. We're going to stop the crossword now because we've gotten through a whole bunch of it. <laughs> But there's still ones that need to be solved. So what I'm going to do between this week and, and, and next time we're on live is I'm going to reconfigure this crossword a bit. I'm going to remove the, those terrible, terrible spaces that I put in place. And we're going to make this available for anyone that wants it. We're going to oh, create the crossword. Great. We're going to have the, the list of hints like I've been showing on screen. And if this is something that you want to have some fun with other people, maybe you're in IT, maybe you, you, you want to kind of have some fun with your 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 IT staff in in a way that kind of makes them think and could actually open up interesting dialogue between you and them. I'm going to give you the answer key too. 
I don't want this to, to be a, a, a that big of a challenge. It should be a learning experience. Yep. So we'll, we'll get that together next week. And, um, you know, George, I, I would just love to hear from you on, you know, what you think about how you feel about making sure that that people understand exactly um, what it is that these all these acronyms, this endless, endless sea of acronyms mean. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's our big anti-acronym kind of stance we've been taking here at Valiant when we talk to customers and uh, we kind of punish ourselves for doing it and saying we're so used to speaking to each other about it and we use the acronyms constantly and it becomes this uh, the shibboleth you know, the code words we use to speak to one another, to our, you know, so that it shows how smart you are. And I think that it, 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 it really d diminishes the powerfulness of what we're trying to accomplish with our, with our clients, protecting them, getting their environments into states so they can be productive and have a really a noble outcome for our technology. So I think, you know, the banishing acronyms is a really important thing. As professionals, we should know them because we're going to come across them in our day to day. Yeah. But um, when we're speaking with customers, I mean, eliminate it from your, your from your your day to day lexicon, like day to day language, because it's they're this they just, they just confuse people, and and I find that the more people use it, the more they want to appear to be smart. Unfortunately, yeah. it's like they learn learn a fancy new word, so I'm going to use the fancy new word. Like, do you know what an IOC is? <laughs> and it's like, man, no one cares. It's like, yeah, I mean, to take it outside of the realm of technology for a minute, it's like someone that uses the word synergy all the time. Just out of the box. Ugh, stop it. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put a pin in that. Um, but that's another one of them that gets I me. Know. But I, know. Look, guys, I had a lot of fun with this today. This was a little different. Was really I thought fun. it was, it was, it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. It was nice to have some folks join along with us. Yep. Next week, great. of course, we're going to be doing building a roadmap to compliance 2022. Something we did about a year ago. I'm going to go back. I'm going to take a look at it. We're going to do some refreshes. Make sure everything is current for this current fiscal year we're gonna you know powwow it drew to optimize our synergies and <laughs> and put something really special together next week to round out yeah. everything that we've done within the realm of compliance with just a little sprinkling of cybersecurity on top yeah well kind so, of all um, kind, all kind anyway, add together into a big cake that is it's like a Reese's network. peanut butter cup you got the peanut butter and you got the chocolate when the two come together it's magical it's very um, so anyway guys I, I hope you had fun with this, and I hope everyone that, that that watched along today had some fun. And again, next week we're going to make this crossword available for free. And uh, depending on how it goes, we'll maybe, maybe we'll do some more of these. Maybe we'll make it more interactive and have some folks come on with us at some point and yeah. turn it into like a bit more of a like a real game. And like and subscribe. Yes. yes, I'm so sorry. I, I'm not going to call intro outro thing, but yeah, be sure to like and <laughs> like the video, subscribe on YouTube for uh, all of the content that we put out, not just the weekly stream, but a lot of other items. I'm going to be working with uh, Megan and George on some definition videos soon to kind of follow up what we've been doing with yep. the acronyms. It's incredibly helpful and we've gotten some really great feedback from our audience so far. So want to make sure that we continue giving the information that you need to help you make better decisions when it comes to your information technology. And of course, that's also what we're here for. So please do visit us at thevaliantway.com to yep. learn more about our services and solutions and uh, drop us a note if you have any questions or, or have an idea for something that we can talk about here. Yep. Exactly. Please do. Love the input. Well, Thank you, Matt. Matt, this was so fun. Oh, one more thing, just because I love it. Check it out. Got the new Valiant shirt. That's right. It's very Stop cool. It. Looking very good. cool. You look great. Ooh, pretty fun. Ooh. Pretty fun. Um, Anyway, everyone, have a great week, and we will see you at the same time next Thursday. Stay right. safe in the Stay snow, everyone. everyone. In the oh, I know. Absolutely. Bye-bye.